So the population models, um, these are the coalescent models from population genetics. And what they do is they describe a quantity called the effective population size and how that changes over time. Now, this is from population genetics. So things work a bit differently there. Firstly, in the population genetics models, time runs backwards from the present. Um, so there, you, so, so you've got present to past, and, and you might have some observed samples, which are the tips of the tree. And the intuition that's happening, the reason it's called the coalescent model, is because for each of the samples, what you're asking is, how many generations must I go back so that these two, these two samples have the same ancestor? <coughs> For the whole collection of samples, there's a most recent common ancestor for all of the samples. And the height of the tree here is called the time to the most recent common ancestor. With the population size, if you have a small population size, what that means is that <coughs> at each generation, there are not very many potential ancestors which there could be. So in the, in the current generation here, there are, there are only a few parents in the previous generations which these current ones could have come from. So the time to the most recent common ancestor, if you have a small population size, is small. If you have a large population size, then you have to go back a long way before all of the samples have come from a single common ancestor. So just looking at these trees here, and what you're looking at is how often the branches come off. You can see the rate of coalescence depends on the effective population size. Now, this is why it's important. <coughs> so, in fact, the distribution of the branch lengths depend on the population size. So, on the left, we have our constant population size we had in the previous slide. And on the right, we have a population which is exponentially growing in time. So at the start, in the past, it's small, and in the present, it's large. So at the past, we've got these short branch lengths, and then towards the present, we have these longer branch lengths. And we can see, although the, the actual topology of the trees is the same, the distribution of the branch lengths are different. Now, <coughs> the exponential growth model is important for epidemic situations. And what it allows you to do is using an exponential growth model is that you can estimate the time to the most recent common ancestor of these, of these samples, these epidemic samples. So you can say, OK, looking at my sample of sequence data, when did the epidemic start? You can say more than that because you have equations which govern how well you're scoring these branch length distributions compared to your data, you can actually calculate a growth rate at the same time. So looking at just sequence data, you can see when, when did the epidemic start and how quick is it growing. And BEAST will tell you these. Um, in that tracer output I showed you before, there will be a line and it will say growth rate. Uh, and there will be a line that says root height, which is the time to the most recent common ancestor. And these are the quantities you'll want to know if you're analysing an epidemic. <coughs>